She thought a while and decided that her conscious life had commenced at Nanny's gate. On a late afternoon, Nanny had called her to come inside the house because she had spied Janie letting Johnny Taylor kiss her over the gatepost. It was a spring afternoon in West Florida. Janie had spent most of the day under a blossoming pear tree in the backyard. She had been spending every minute that she could steal away from her chores under that tree for the last three days. There was to say, ever since the first tiny bloom had opened, it had called her to come and gaze on a mystery. From barren brown stems to glistening leaf buds, from the leaf buds to the snowy virginity of bloom, it stirred her tremendously. How and why? It was like a flute song forgotten in another existence and remembered again. And what and how? Why? The singing she heard had nothing to do with her ears. The rose of the world was breathing out smell. It followed her through all of her waking moments and caressed her in her sleep. It connected itself with other vaguely felt matters that had struck her outside observation and buried themselves in her flesh. Now they emerged and quested about her consciousness. I am ready for love. Why are you hiding from me? I'd quickly give my freedom. To be held in your captivity Janie was ready for love, but was she ready to be held prisoner by her failed fantasy? Her hopeful illusion had slapped her down and left her captive in what she once saw as liberation. Janie stood where he left her for unmeasured time and thought. She stood there until something fell off the shelf inside of her. Then she went inside there to see what it was. It was her image of Jody tumbled down and shattered. But looking at it, she saw that it never was the flesh and blood figure of her dreams. Just something she had grabbed up to drape her dreams over. In a way, she turned her back upon the image where it lay and looked further. She had no more blossomy openings dusting pollen over her man, neither any glistening young fruit where the petals used to be. She found that she had a host of thoughts she'd never expressed to him, and numerous emotions she had never let Jody know about. Things packed up and put away in parts of her heart where she could never find them. She was saving up feelings for some man she had never seen. She had an inside and an outside now, and suddenly, she knew how not to mix them.
Jamie's captivity died, leaving her with the chance to step into the horizon, not the horizon that Nanny tried to manufacture for her, but into the warmth of the sun she desperately needed to find, this time on her own. Finish. End. Nevermore. Darkness. Deep hole. Disillusion. Eternity. Weeping and wailing outside. Inside, the expensive black folds were resurrection and life. She did not reach outside for anything, nor did the things of death reach inside to disturb her calm. She sent her face to Joe's funeral, and herself went rollicking in the springtime across the world. After a while, the people finished their celebration, and Janie went on home. Before she slept that night, she burnt up every one of her head rags. Some people could look at a mud puddle and see an ocean with ships, but Nanny belonged to that other kind that loved to deal in scraps. Here Nanny had taken the biggest thing God ever made, the horizon, for no matter how far a person can go, the horizon is still way beyond you, and pinched it into such a little bit of a thing that she could tie it about her granddaughter's neck tight enough to choke her. And she hated the old woman who had twisted her so in the name of love. Most humans didn't love one another know how, and this mislove was so strong that even common blood couldn't overcome it all the time. She had found a jewel down inside herself and had wanted to walk where people could see her and gleam around it, but she had been set in the marketplace to sell, been set for still bait. And when God made the man, he made him out of stuff that sung all the time and glittered all over. Then after that, some angels got jealous and chopped him into millions of pieces. But still he glittered and hummed. So they beat him down to nothing but sparks. But each little spark had a shine and a song. So they covered each one over with mud. And the lonesomeness and the sparks made them hunt for one another. But the mud is deaf and dumb. Like all other tumbling mud balls, Janie had tried to show her shine. There is someone here inside, someone I thought had died so long ago.
the sun of the evening sun came along, and Janie rediscovered that voice that she had lost. She found an end to her quest. She found the freedom that one can only find by loving and being loved. Janie found tea cake. Then you must tell him that love ain't something like a grindstone that's the same thing everywhere and do the same thing to everything it touch. Love is like the sea. It's a moving thing, but still in all, it takes shape from the shore it meets. And it's different with every shore. Found my most intimate prayer When I found you I found what every heart dreams of When I found you I found love When I found you I found the rest of my when I found you, I told all others goodbye. When I found you, I saw my fears fly away.